In this video, I'm going to step through the functions used to create this mug shape model within Maya um, and also to put a texture onto the UVs as well of your own making. So to start with, I'm going to start a new scene and I've already set up my project. If you haven't done this, do set project uh, and also make your folders for your project. Um, in this case, I'm going to start with a polygon cylinder. I'm just going to click to create it in the center there. And I'm in the modeling standard toolkits here, or the layout. And this gives me the modeling toolkit, which we'll be using in a moment, um, and the attribute editor. Now the attribute editor has all the nodes um, for this object along the top. The third one in, polycylinder, gives us these um, dimensions that we might be working with. So again, we're working in centimeters uh, and expecting to send this over to Unity, with uh, which works in meters. So we need to get this right. And I'm going to guess at the dimensions of a cup. Um, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, as long as the proportions are right, like the handle is the right size for this cup, we can scale it afterwards. But we do need to have some subdivisions to do it the way that I'm modeling. So I'm going to add subdivisions on the cap, which is the top. And within this, it gives us another ring of um, edges around here. So that's a, an edge loop that runs right around the center there. So once I've done that, I'm going to go over to the modeling toolkit and select hit the components edges. So we've got three components. We've got vertices, which are the actual points on the object. Um, we can move those if we wish. Uh, we've got faces also. We will be looking at those in a minute. And edges. So I'm going to select edges. And if I double click one of these edges that is in an edge loop, it will select the whole edge loop. And I'm going to select the scale tool. Shortcut for that is R on the keyboard if you want to use that. Um, press R. And then I'm going to take the center here and that will scale this in all dimensions. So I'm going to bring this to the edge. So now I can work with this rim of faces around here. So if I, uh, I'm just going to go back to the select tool. You probably don't need to do that, but. Um, I'm going to. So I've selected one face and I held down shift and double clicked the one next to it and that selected everything in that uh, in that loop. Now the first and the most common method we're going to use is extrude. So here it's got the Apple E or Control E to set the extrude off. So I'm going to click on extrude and that gives me this gizmo down here um, from which I can move this in different dimensions. It's also a little blue spot here, which will center the gizmo into the center of all the faces. I'm going to just bring this up. I'm going to do this by eye. I want a reasonably tall mug. Um, and then just let go. I can click to deselect. I'm going to go back to object mode and press F on the keyboard to get that to focus in the middle there. Uh, so that's given me a, a very basic mug shape. What we are going to do is look at smoothing. So we can preview smoothing by using the one, two, and three keys on the keyboard. So if I press two, we see it smooths the edges but leaves the frame of what the actual geometry is. Um, and three just shows me that smooth mode. So we can work with this smoothing on there as well. So we've got a certain amount of smoothing there. It's probably a weird shape in the middle. It kind of comes around to a bowl shape in the bottom of this mug. Um, Generally, people won't see the insides of the mug, but um, that may be something that if it features, then you may want to adjust that. So I'm going to select this edge loop. Uh, it's not actually selected. There. Shift double click on those, made it work. And I want to just taper this. So I'm going to just expand these here. Make it slightly wider. Um, and I could also adjust that as well if I want that just to be taller. So that's given me a, a tapered edge to this, and that's really useful. So I've got an edge loop along the bottom here, which 
helps to uh, will help when I do the, the smoothing on this. Um, and also I may want to work with the, the bottom of the mug because it may be quite often people will lift the mug up in the scene. So I'm just going to double click on that um, and do a similar function with the uh, with this edge loop. Double click and just bring that to the edge by expanding from the middle there. So it seems to go a little slow. Um, and the idea here is that there'll be a little ridge along the bottom on a coffee mug, the bit that kind of makes the stain on the on the paper. So I've got that kind of, there is a depth to this. So I'm also going to extrude these faces. Now this is where it's quite important to have um, several functions on. So I've got camera base selection on. So that means when I drag with the left mouse clicked, I can select all of those faces. Now it's important to have camera base selection on at this point, because if I don't, uh, if I have that on turned to off, if I select these faces here, you'll see that it also selects the faces underneath. So camera base selection is really important in this instance. Sometimes you don't want it, um, but in this instance we do, and we're just going to extrude this as we did before. Uh, and see that slightly upside down. I'm going to center that again by clicking in the center of that blue aspect there. And just bring that up ever so slightly. Uh, probably a tiny bit more. See, I don't want to take it so far that it goes higher than this edge loop, which was the top of the mug. So I'll go back to ob object mode. I can see that in its its entirety. So we've got a reasonable amount of geometry around here. So when I smooth this, if I press three on the keyboard, I can see that there's a reasonable kind of hold on that geometry because we've put um, a good amount of uh, edge loops in there. We will look at other options for this, but in this case, we want to keep it quite simple. Um, a mug shouldn't really take us very long to make. And so I'm going to rush on to the next stage, which will be the handle, which again is made by a cylinder. I'm going to use the move tool, this one here, press W on the keyboard for shortcut. And I just bring that off to the side and shape that with the attribute editor to the third tab again, poly cylinder. And this is the input for how that was. So I'm going to make this taller. Um, probably slightly taller than the mug. Um, let me give that actually 20. Um, and I will put some subdivisions in the height. Now I'm going to bend this. So we're going to use, we need to deform the, the height of it to round it off. So um, I'm going to put 20 subdivisions in the height. If we don't do that, the object won't move. Um, and then we're going to use a function at the top here, again from the modeling menu set, it's uh, a non-linear deformer bend. So I'm just going to apply this to this object, and at first nothing happens, but I get these nodes over here, which will relate to the bend. If I want to find this again, it is one of the nodes that is attached to this object. So we have all the other nodes in there. Um, and I can adjust this from there. So it's bending that way. I actually want it to bend that way. And it may be that if I move the object now, it will come away from this uh, deformer that's attached to it. So I probably need to move both at once to get those to work. I'll just demonstrate how that, how that functions. So these two objects are still based together. So if I move one, it will still deform around that shape. So as I move it into different positions, it will deform differently. Um, I probably made too much of that curve. I'm going to say minus 90 gives you that uh, complete straight line there, which will probably need a little bit more uh, um, just to bring that around because we have got a uh, a 
tapered edge on that. And that's it. So that's made that object. So to break this link, I can either duplicate this cylinder that I've got selected here. If I duplicate that, then I get another cylinder. I'll bring this over here for a moment. But what we can notice on the duplicated one, it doesn't have the link to the deformer. So it doesn't move in the same, it doesn't alter in the same way as if I move this one, it will just stay in that position and get deformed and turn inside out. So that's taken away that relationship between the, the two objects. So I won't be able to change that deformation after I've worked with it. So I'm just going to change one or two aspects. We can actually kind of get the, the taper to work in a slightly different way. We've got a high bound uh, and low bound. That normally works when it's probably more full of a fuller object. Um, but we should be able to uh, just get that to uh, adjust slightly as we're working there. There you go. You see the high bound will straighten it off slightly. So if I do want to have that going straight in and the low bound, um, low bound is a, another number there. So okay, you can work with those in those ways. Uh, so I just want to reduce that again. Somehow I was demonstrating and lost my point there so that's the just getting those ends to line up properly um, so it might not be perfect but the the uh, principles there I'm moving it forward I am shrinking it slightly so it's good to be a fairly good proportion on the mug I don't want to take up too much space um, and then I can duplicate that get the handle here and just connect it up um, I will need to rotate that slightly um, but if it has the edge has a volume, it should be able to disappear in there as well. So the other way of breaking this connection between these two objects, this cylinder and the bend handle, is to delete the histories. So delete by type history for this object will take away that bend node, and it's disappeared, and that is just that object on its own. Um, I tend not to work with that in that way. I tend to use a duplicate so that I can adjust that later. So I'll take those off to the side um, and I can delete that one there. Um, and I have a mug that I may want to change the handle. It's probably gonna be a bit more squashed. If I did that again, I'd probably make that thinner. Um, but this will work for this demonstration. So lastly, what I'm gonna do is set up a texture for this. So I'm going to select both items at once, right click, assign new material down here. This saves me going to the hyper shade editor. And I'm going to select a blin. A blin is a simple texture, a bit like a Lambert, but it has a gloss to it as well. So we can have a shininess on that. So when this blin comes up here, um, I'll just name it as mug blin. Similarly, while I'm doing that, I'll say mug body, and that one there is mug handle. Okay, and the other bits I'll delete later anyway. So I've got the, uh, the color, so a white cup, I can just bring that up to be color there. Um, but I also want to add a texture to this so I can add a picture to the mug so I can put a, a name or a text or a logo on it. Um, and for this, I'm gonna look at the UV editing. So if I go to UV editing and I have the, the main body of the mug selected, you'll see that I've got this uh, shape here, which is really showing the, it's a bit simplified. This is very similar to what I would see in the cylinder itself. The UV toolkit comes up. UV toolkit comes up when I do UV editing, uh, and this allows me to sort of select different aspects of it. So if I select these ones here, those are selecting faces, um, and you can see that UV wraps around the top. I can see the blue in there, where it's highlighted of what that would be. Um, similarly, the other aspects it kind of just shows up which ones are which. So it's it's a bit of a mess because I've been using extrusion. I have to clean this up um, as I go. Now the 
easiest thing to do is to go to UV automatic and this will automatically lay out the object for me as long as I'm in object mode I think uh, I right sorry mess that up right click the object and go back to object mode so now when I've got that selected I get it automatic and that lays it out in a different pattern so each of these should give a different um, relate to a different face on there all separated out uh, we can do a lot more on this we can make this look neater um, but really I'm only wanting to work with these faces on the front to add a picture in there so if I click on these it will show me which ones I'm working with so if I can select those there I know that I'm working with that on the front of the mug um, I could if I wanted to join these together join the seams onto the next part so I can select an edge and say well that edge should relate to this edge um, and it will snap them together for me but I'm really just going to work with this one for now so I know which UVs I'm working to to add my image or logo to so I'm going to make sure my objects in uh, object mode so right right if it's not you can right click and set it to object mode if it's only got some selected faces so like here I've got this single face selected then that won't that won't do anything so I'm just going to unclick that again right click object mode and now I'm going to go to image UV snapshot um, give it a name I've already named my one and I'll overwrite the file that I've done already so now when I go to Photoshop I can open that file and it's saved into my images folder and this will give me that UV layout that I've been working to um, and I can see this one here I remember this part here is where I had the front of the mug um, and there was a logo on that or oh, that's where I can put my logo so let's put JT uh, and let's come out in white but uh, I can change that um, because I actually want the mag mug to be white so I'll just make that red and select that um, you can add all sorts of other things in there whatever you whatever images you want to I'm just going to change the background of this to be completely white as well so I'll edit fill um, and here you can choose which color I've got white but you can say the foreground or background color from over here um, so and then I'll drag that layer under my logo layer so I'll just save that to start with uh, save that back into the images folder but I will also do a, a an export quick export as PNG which I'll save into the source images folder um, and that's where I would keep all the files that link so it's a simple texture but uh, when I come back to Maya I should be able to look at the attribute editors for this object select the color here click on file and connect that up to my PNG and now when I turn on textures in my viewport over here that should show up so I've got that logo fitting to the mug um, and the mug works so that's the workflow so I am using blends with this I find that um, some of the uh, PRS shaders are a bit excessive for this kind of work um, so just finally, I, I could delete that, but I, I kind of want to do more to the handle. I don't, I'm not 100% satisfied with that. Um, I would have it coming out a bit more straight and curved around. Um, but for now, I can select everything and send it over to Unity. I will just check this handle. Now you see the handle is using the same texture as the mug, but because the UV map is uh, not covering that part where the logo is, I can actually use that. 
if it was slightly different, if it was uh, this area was covering over the logo, you can just select faces there. I'm going to mark it around all of these and you can actually just move them. So pressing W on the keyboard gives me the move tool and I can move them across. So if I did actually want that on the handle, you can see it just appear on the left there, um, but I'll move it uh, over to the other side just to make sure that doesn't show up. Um, yeah, so finally, I can go back to, I'll go back to my modeling standard um, because that will just be more likely, it's just easier to select the object mode for the modeling toolkit. Um, now if I want this to be a one single object, the last thing I can do is combine these. So I can combine these objects into one piece, combine mug body one, um, and that will allow me to send that as one object over to to Maya. So uh, over to Unity. So I'll just save that as Maya demo final, and I've already set up my link to the Unity project. I set my Unity project, and I'll send that selection over. So I can keep these working files because I'm not sending those over as before. I am embedding the media because I'm using a, um, a an image with that, a texture image. Demo. I'll send that over and then we'll have a look at that over there. I have got smooth preview on there. So that may be something I adjust, and if I want to keep that smooth preview when I send it over, I can go to Modify, Convert, Smooth Mesh Preview to Polygons, and that will lock that smoothness into the polygons. So there you go, it's added in quite a lot of geometry, um, but it's going to keep that as we go forward. Um, that is all still one mesh. The handle, I should have done the smoothing uh, before I did the handle, the handle has got far too much geometry on. Um, so before I combined it, I should have done the conversion into polygons. Uh, and it may be that in a long shot you don't need to do this and to keep the low res uh, images. So I'll send that to Unity again. Uh, send to Unity selection and I will do mug demo smooth. So now when I go to Unity and make a new scene, I should be able to find my mug models. So I've got mug demo, drop that into there, and mug demo smooth. Uh, and I'll also move my main camera using the move tool and bring that closer and both are in the same position uh, so I'll just bring the smoothed one out to the side slightly so you can see this object here does represent a mug but this one has that smoothness that we were looking for so it really does depend on the the work you're, you're doing um, it hasn't extracted my materials yet but I can extract textures um, save those for use here so it's being a little bit slow for me um, and then I can see within my viewport that it has come up um, on the one that I had extracted from. Uh, I'd probably extract materials as well, just so I get that material to work with it. Uh, oh, I've got materials folder, I'll choose that one. Um, and that's the way to do that. So there's there's quite a lot of functions in there. There is a reasonably simple workflow, but there's some tips to really show you how to do that in Maya. Um, and how to get the kind of the ease of doing that in certain steps. So if you don't have to smooth it, 
don't do that. So I'll just do the undos on that until that comes off. Um, and if I was needing to take the handle off this before I smoothed it, you can separate the object. So that makes it into the two objects. Again, if I smooth that one using two on the keyboard, then modify convert smooth mesh preview to polygons. Then I'm just doing that on the body of the mug. And after that, I can combine it into one. So that makes it a single geometry. And uh, because I've separated it and taken it apart, it does actually add in quite a few different elements in my scene, um, which will disappear if I delete all by type history. So that clears it, clears it right up to just showing me the the minimum aspects that I've, I'm looking at. Um, there you go. Enjoy.